In the following video, we're going to examine how to find the coordinates of the vertices of the triangle formed by the system inequalities. So what this means is the solution region for these inequalities. First, it's going to form a triangle. Always read the directions. This tells me when I shade, I should get a triangle from overlapping, which means if I don't, I need to go back and check some of my work because I did something wrong. And we want to find the vertices, the coordinates of them, the x, y coordinates of those vertices. And so when you graph them, we're going to look for overlapping of the shaded regions, and we're going to look where they intersect should give us an x and y coordinate. So let's try the first example to kind of help us out. We have three inequalities here. Now, the first two I see are in slope intercept form already. So I'm just going to graph those as is, and I'm going to use blue for the first one. And so if I have y is less than or equal to negative 1 fourth x plus 6, I have a y-intercept of positive 6 and a slope of negative 1 fourth. So down 1, right 4. Down 1, right 4. I could also go up 1, left 4. And up 1, left 4. And since this says less than or equal to, I know it's going to be a solid line going through all those points. And it says y is less than, and so my shaded area should be way down towards the lesser, the smaller yy values. And now I graph y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 8. So let me change this shaded region to blue. And that way I can use green for the other one. And so I have a y-intercept of negative 8 here and a slope of positive 2. So up one, right one, up one, right one, and so on across the entire grid using that slope of 2. Up two, right one, 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 and up two, right one. Across the entire grid. And so when I graph this one, it will be a solid line all the way through my graph. And it says for this, y is greater than. And so I would shade to all of my greater y values. And again, just like I did before, I'm going to see where they crisscross. And I see they crisscross here. And so I'm going to erase everything else. So that way my graph doesn't look too sloppy. And so now I have to look at my other one. 4y is greater than or equal to negative 15x minus 32. I'm going to divide both sides by 4 to get y is greater than or equal to, you have negative 15 fourths x minus 8. So I'm at negative 8. I'm going to go up all the way to 15. So I'm all the way up 8, and then I'm all the way up 7. And the left, one, two, three, four. And this is going to be y is greater than or equal to. So that's going to be a solid line, just like the others. And then I'm going to shade. And so since it says greater than, I want to shade towards these greater y values, which are right here. And so I would shade to the right. Now remember, the direction says find the vertices of the triangle. And so now I can see the triangle that is formed is right in here. And so I'm going to erase everything else. And that way I can focus solely on that triangle. And looking at the vertices. And so when I look at these vertices, I'm going to have to identify the coordinates. So I see this first one here. That coordinate is negative 4, 7. So one of the vertices I have is negative 4, 7. 
And then I come and I saw that, come down here and I see that this was another vertex, which is the coordinate zero, negative eight. And then I follow up to the other part. Now this one's a little bit trickier. For this one, when I was following my slope of going up to right one, up to right one, up to right one, and so on and so on and so on, I can see that the intersection is not a nice number. It looks in between the values. So I'm just going to estimate it. If now on a test, I'm not going to ask you guys to estimate it. I'm going to make them overlap easily for us so we can take a look. This looks like it is maybe six and a quarter and four and a half. So we could say it's at 6.25, 4.5 as an estimate of my coordinates. So that last coordinate, I'm going to go and say it wasn't a good example for that one um, because we're going to have to estimate it. But we can tell for the other ones, they overlap nicely. So let's try the next example and see if it's any better. Now, if we look at this one, I can see I have to solve all three of these in two slope intercept forms. So this one's going to be more fun. So we're going to take 2x minus y is greater than or equal to negative 1. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And I get negative y is greater than or equal to negative 2x minus 1. And I'm going to divide everything by my negative 1. So remember, since you divided by a negative, we have to remember that we need to flip the symbol. So y is less than or equal to 2x plus 1. So I have a y intercept of positive 1, a slope of 2, so up 2, right 1. And the reason why we do it across the entire grid is because it allows us to see the overlapping that forms the vertices for us. So since it says y is less than, or equal to, it is going to be a solid line. And I would shade towards the lesser values, which are down here on the y-axis. So again, using those lines to make it easy to see a crisscross pattern for the solution. I now get to do the other inequality. And so for this one, let's use green. I have x plus y is less than or equal to 4. Now this one's a basic one step. You would subtract x from both sides to get the y by itself. And you get y is less than or equal to negative x and a positive 4. And so I have a y-intercept of positive 4, a slope of negative 1, so down one, right one. And I see right here there's an overlapping. So that may be one of my vertices. So down one, right one across the entire graph. I don't know where it's going to overlap in the other one, so I want to make sure I follow still across the entire graph. And up one, left one. Again, it's less than or equal to. So I'm going to use a solid line. And less than, we shade towards our lesser y values, which are under it, are below it. So I put my lines through. And I can see my crisscrossing pattern is happening in this region down here. And so I'm going to erase the other lines I drew. So that way my graph is a little bit neater to see the triangle and the overlapping. And so that's the second inequality in the system. So let's graph the third one. And we'll go ahead and use purple for this one. So x plus 4y is greater than or equal to 4. Subtract x from both sides. I get 4y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 4. And then divide everything by 4. That gets the y by itself. I get, remember this is really a coefficient of negative 1. So negative 1 fourth x plus 1. So I have a y-intercept of positive 1 and a slope of negative 1 fourth. So down 1, 1, 2, 3 to the right 4. 
and I go up one to the left four. I saw that I overlapped here, created the second vertex. And so now I connect them with my line, which again is going to be a solid line. And remember, the directions say find the coordinates of the vertices of the triangle. And so when I take a look at this, all my overlapping regions are in that triangle. So I'm going to shade that triangle region. And I'm going to erase everything else. And so now I have to identify my coordinates of the vertices. So let's grab the inequality, the last one, the purple one, shrink it down. I see all of my work together. Now when we write our vertices, let's write them in this space here. So the first one I saw where they overlapped was right here. And that's the coordinate 1, 3. So for the first vertex I have is the coordinate 1, 3. The next vertex I had saw was down here, which is the coordinate 4, 0. And the last one I see was when I connected the dots for that last inequality, I get the coordinate 0, 1. And so these are the coordinates of the vertices of the shaded region of the solution set to this system of inequalities. So it's the same idea as the graphing system of equality examples that we did in the previous video. Put them in slope as a form, determine the shading, dash for solid. It's just now when they overlap, the directions tell us, hey, they're going to form a triangle. And I want to know what the coordinates are of those vertices. So that way, when you're shading, you should know your picture in some way. You should see a triangle with the inequalities formed.